Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to be touching on my top 20 favourite movies from the year 2010. So these are all in accordance with the release dates from IMDb and again there's no real right or wrong to this list. These are just my top 20 personal favourite movies that I enjoyed the most. So that being said, I've got about 6 or 7 honourable mentions I just want to give a shout out to. And yeah, just uh, I'm going to do that before I get into the main list. So kicking it off with my honourable mentions. My first one is Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. I did not like this movie when I first saw it. I need to give it another chance. I did have the Blu-ray originally and then I sold it. And then I bought the Blu-ray again. Um, because it's it's a good looking movie. I'm just not a fan of Michael Cera at all whatsoever. Um, the guy just shouldn't be an actor in my opinion. But... Yeah, I am willing to give this one another chance and give it another look to see how, how it is. Maybe my opinion's changed. Uh, my next honorable mention is Beginners uh, with Hugh McGregor and Christopher Plummer. A uh, great sort of uh, drama movie uh, about um, this older guy who realises he comes out as gay really late on in life. And yeah, I just thought it was re a really, really interesting story and... Um, some good funny moments in there too. Uh, my next honourable mention is uh, Danny Boyle's 127 Hours with uh, James Franco. Yeah, uh, really, really uh, gruesome and hard watch for me. This one. Um, yeah, by the end of the movie, I was just, I was just drained. Uh, uh, yeah, great story about this guy who pretty much um, went off on this sort of little rock climbing adventure and he got uh, wedged, got his arm wedged between this boulder and was stuck there for 127 hours and end up yeah I won't I won't spoil the ending as to how as to what happens but it was really really testing and really really gruesome and yeah um, very very draining so my next honorable mention is Blue Valentine with Michelle Williams and Ryan Gosling um, yeah, it says Blue Valentine, uh, a love story on the front there. It feels anything but, again, another emotionally draining film. Um, pretty much about the realistic side of a romantic couple. And, yeah, very, very uh, an interesting watch, to say the least. Um, my next time we mention is Never Let Me Go with... Uh, Kerry Mulligan, Keira Knightley and Andrew Garfield. Again, another sort of fantastic drama film with a great cast and another film that I really, really enjoyed. Um, my next honorable mention is a movie that sort of came out um, at a similar time that a similar movie also came out. Um, and that is Super. I enjoyed the hell out of this. It, was, it had such dark humour to it. Um, great cast with Rain Wilson, Elliot Page, Liv Tyler, Kevin Bacon. Awesome, awesome movie. Just thought it was really, really dark. It goes a bit too dark in some places. Um, but yeah, and some of the outcomes of the characters in this really, really surprised me. It was, it was, it's a good, fun watch, but didn't quite crack the top twenty for me. And my last honorable mention is Please Don't Hate Me for This. The Social Network. This is the most fucking overrated movie I, I've seen. I think it might be because of me and I don't really care that much about Facebook. I mean, yeah, it is it is what it is. Everyone uses it and I, I guess a movie about it was crying to be made. But David Fincher is a fabulous director. I mean, he does not direct garbage at all whatsoever. Um, I'm not gonna say this movie is bad at all it, it it isn't it's a well-made movie it just does absolutely fuck all for me um and jesse eisenberg's not that really a compelling of an actor to me anyway and him being in the lead role of a movie about facebook just falls flat on its arse for me it doesn't excite me in any which way but i'm after saying that it's not a bad it's not a bad movie it's very well made um and I, I will give it the praise for that. But personally, for me, I just don't get any enjoyment out of this film whatsoever. And I'm seeing people sort of praise this movie as like the 
the best movie of the 20th century, like Watch Bojo, just are absolutely up this movie's arse. But that's okay. Um, I guess they like it. But for me, n- no, it's not. It's not. Doesn't make for repeat viewing. I'm afraid. Um, but I'm glad I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it twice now, and that's probably it for me. But yeah. So that being said, I'm gonna kick it off with number twenty now of my favorite films from 2010. So coming in at number twenty is The Expendables. Now, there are two key factors of this movie that I really, really enjoy and what do it for me with this film. The first one is the cast. The ensemble cast in this movie is absolutely brilliant. It's like all your childhood favourite action stars coming together and making this absolute badass movie. And the second factor of this movie is its action. Its action is superb when it gets going. Now, the downside to this movie I think personally is it can be a bit boring in some parts and it can get very slow and drawn out. But for me, the cast and the action are enough to make it a re- um, give it that rewatch factor, as it were. Um, but yeah, as I said, it's a flawed movie. I think the second one just might be a hair better. But yeah, Expendables, it's, it's a ton of fun and it was a great experience to see all those action stars come together the steelbook as well just looks absolutely brilliant three discs as well just miss those days where you got the the blu-ray and the dvd and the back cover with the logo as well looks so good right my next pick coming in at number 19 for me is a foreign film uh, called i saw the devil my god this movie was just absolutely brutal and violent for what it was and i loved every minute of it it was just absolutely superb had me drawn in it was fantastic absolutely absolutely loved it just thought it was such a brilliant movie really really good just uh the violence and it was just so uncomfortable to watch but yeah i saw the devil if you've not seen it and you've got the stomach for it check it out just Absolutely brilliant film. So, coming up at my number 18 pick is sort of another film that um, is a really, really good blend of horror and comedy, in my opinion. Uh, And it's Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. Yeah, again, this was another movie that absolutely surprised me. Looking at the cover, it looks like one of those cheap horror movies, but it is not. It is so much more than that. It has an absolutely fantastic cast to it and a fantastic premise. There's just this group of of teenagers like pretty much in the woods camping and they come across these two rednecks who are actually really nice guys and they just, through a series of misunderstandings, just think them as two sort of violent rednecks and it just leads to absolutely some hilarious stuff and it's brilliant and so much fun. And I really love the ending, as unrealistic as the ending is. I still love it. I just think it's just fantastic. But yeah, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Do yourself a favour and check that one out. It's a great time of a movie. So coming up at number 17 for me is a movie that won Christian Bale his best supporting um, actor Oscar. Uh, and that is The Fighter. I thought this movie was fantastic. Great, 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 great boxing movie. Just absolutely superb. Um, it's up there in the realm of sort of, of Rocky and Raging Bull for me, this movie. I just thought it was really, really good. I know that's really high praise. Um, but again, it's just such a such a well-made, well-made movie and well-acted as well. Christian Bale's on point in this film. It's scary how good he is in this film. This is one of my favourite performances by him. It's so, so, so good. Um, Yeah, just a fantastic, fantastic overall boxing movie, and I enjoyed the hell out of it. Just thought it was superb. So, coming up at number 16 for me is uh, another foreign film, a bit of a monster movie as well, and it is uh, Troll Hunter. Uh, Got the sort of lenticular slip as well on this. Just looks absolutely great. Um... Yeah, it's pretty much about these documentary makers who sort of heard about this this guy and what he gets up to. 
and he pretty much um, exterminates trolls is what he does and they sort of like want to find out more about what he does and about him and at first he's like you know piss off go away um, it's best you don't bother me anymore but the effects in this movie were just really really good and I massively massively enjoyed it the designs of the trolls some of them are just absolutely terrifying and what they what you know what they do it's it's just really really gritty and a, a grim looking film and I I absolutely loved it I thought it was just superb um but yeah yeah another great 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 film you know 2010 just turned out some absolute fantastic stuff right so coming up next to me at number 15 is Disney's Tangled again the classic Rapunzel story um just Another great animated movie from Disney, to be honest. I miss, I miss the sort of the hand drawn stuff, um, as they were going into this this CGI realm. With uh, moving forward with their movies, um, it's not as good as the uh, the clarity that you get with Pixar, but they're sort of masters of that that realm, really, aren't they? Um, but the animated stuff still, look, the computer animated stuff from Disney still looks pretty pretty good. Um, but yeah, Tangled, it was just a blast and a ton of fun, um, really. And it was sort of kickstarted Disney again in sort of terms of the quality of movies they were turning out. Um, the next one they released in particular was one of my, one of my absolute favorites of theirs, but yeah, Tangled, it's, it, again, it's just a, a ton of fun and, um, it got some really good humor in it too. So my next pick at number 14 it's an MCU movie, and I know it's not everyone's favourite, but I absolutely love this movie, and it's Iron Man 2. Um, I love the first two Iron Man movies. I'm not a big fan of the third one. Um, but yeah, for me, the selling point to this, I just absolutely loved seeing Iron Man and War Machine on screen together. Um, the two of them just look absolutely great you've got the sleekness of iron man and the badassness of, of um war machine just those two costumes look absolutely great i actually really enjoyed mickey rock as as the villain as well um just absolutely great to be honest there's a scene in it which terrifies me where he's like sort of left alone with these guards and then you don't see what happens and then the next scene, the two guards are just hanging in the background. Like, he's just killed them. We'd never found out how he did it. It's just so unsettling and so creepy. You just see these legs dangling, and it's like, my God. That's in an MCU movie. Whoa. But, yeah, Sam Rockwell in this as well. He's a ton of fun as sort of Tony Stark's uh, competitor. Um, I actually really like Gary Shanlin in this as well, the late Gary Shanlin. I thought he was pretty funny and a bit of a pain in the bit of a thorn in Tony's side and vice versa but the only thing I complain about it is there isn't really enough Iron Man in the movie um but yeah I love the design as well of Whiplash I thought he was fantastic um just really re a really really good superhero movie it it feels a bit res more reserved than the first one but I still enjoyed the hell out of it I thought it was just a ton of fun So, coming up next for me, at number 13, is the Coen Brothers remake of True Grit. Um, yeah, wow, what a cast this movie has. Jeff Bridges, Matt Damon, Josh Brolin, absolutely superb Western from the two brothers. Um, just absolutely fantastic. I really, really do enjoy the John Wayne version as well. I saw that one second prior to this. Of course, John Wayne actually won... Um, his Oscar for that film as well. But I thought this was just an absolutely superb Western uh, with a great climax to it as well. Really, really good stuff from the Coen brothers. Again, Coen brothers for me can very much be hit and miss. Um, they're just those, that type of director that, um, that just suffers from that inconsistency. But when they're on it, they're on it. Um, they're, they're absolutely great. And true grit was just another home run for me from them. Just absolutely loved it. So, coming up next to me at number 12 is a bit more of a smaller film. Um, 
and I, I again, this was another drama movie I absolutely loved, and it's Winter's Bone with Jennifer Lawrence. I mean, my word, I wasn't really a big fan of Jennifer Lawrence. I'm not too in. I don't really like the Hunger Games movies. I think Battle Royale is the far does that story far far better. Um, and again, I didn't really. I saw this after seeing Silver Linings Playbook, where she won her Oscar, and I thought. She's won it too early. She hasn't really established herself yet because the Oscars like your peak. There's actors who have been in the game for years who haven't won one. And if you win one too early, I think you sort of peak and don't really improve on that. But two actors that are really, really surprising me with that are Jennifer Lawrence and Emma Stone. I mean, some of their work lately has been really good. But this was just a superb drama film about a girl who pretty much wants to join the army but can't. And I just found it was absolutely riveting and fantastic. I thought it was just a great, great, great drama. So do yourself a favour with Winter's Bone and check it out. Just absolutely brilliant. So speaking of Emma Stone, coming up at number 11 for me is Easy A. I enjoyed the hell out of this movie yet again with its great cast as well. Just absolutely superb. Um, great modern day high school drama as well. Um, sort of takes takes vein of of um, the John Hughes stuff that came out in the eighties, and just really really enjoyed it. Thought it was just an absolute blast and a ton of fun. And one of my favorite Emma Stone movies, you know, it's up there with Cruella for me, and then um, Battle of the Sexes and La La Land. Just yeah, thought it was just really really good. Really really enjoyed the hell out of Easy A. So coming up at number ten for me is another sort of drama film. One I think sort of fell under the radar a little bit. And it's The Kids Are All Right. I love the story to this. I just thought it was so fantastic. It's about a lesbian couple and their kids. And their kids sort of want to find out a bit more about the biological father. um, Played by Mark Ruffalo. And it just leads to some very, very uncomfortable stuff. Um... But again, the movie was just absolutely riveting with Annette Benning and Julianne Moore as this couple. And again, the kids sort of want to find out about the sperm donor that they used. Um, and they do try and form a relationship with their father, but it's not all as, doesn't go as to plan as they thought it would. And things just get really, really uncomfortable, but it was just such a riveting, riveting watch. And I really, really enjoyed the hell out of it. I, Said that about all these films, but that's why they're in my top 20. So, yeah, kids are all right. Fantastic drama. So, coming up next for me at number nine is Martin Scorsese's Shutter Island with DiCaprio. Uh, again, another fantastic collaboration between these these two uh, creative artists. I just absolutely love anything they do. From The Aviator, Gangs of New York... And then on to things like The Wolf of Wall Street. Just absolutely superb stuff. And Shutter Island is another home run. It's really, really solid. Really, really good. Again, Mark Ruffalo, Ben Kingsley, and Caprio himself. Fantastic, fantastic cast. Great mystery crime movie. Um, that's got a really good twist to the end as well that I really, really enjoyed. Um, but yeah, it's a great looking movie too as well, you know. Um, Scorsese directs the shit out of this one just absolutely superb so coming up next for me at number 8 is the film that won best actress this year and it's Darren Aronofsky's Black Swan um, yeah again this was just a trip of a movie I was just riveted by it and absolutely hooked great cast as well with Natalie Portman Vincent Castle, Mila Kunis, and Renona Ryder as well. Great to see her in in um, in this as well. Yeah, again, it's sort of about them preparing for this uh, this ballet performance of the Black Swan and just how mentally draining and it takes its toll on Natalie Portman, and it just leads to some of the most weirdest riveting stuff you know I've ever seen. Of course, the big selling point is that sex scene we all know about but yeah that that that's great it, it feels organic to the movie to me in in that in my in my opinion that i just yeah 
it was just such a well-made film and it just looks absolutely brilliant. Um, to be fair, it's not everyone's cup of tea. I can completely understand that. I completely get it. Um, but yeah, it's a great... Um, looks great on Blu-ray too. I miss the, the days we got um, the triple packs, you know, with the digital DVD and Blu-ray. Really, really miss those. But yeah, um, Black Swan, just a, another fantastic looking movie. So, coming up at number seven for me is probably a film that would appear a lot higher on people's list. Um, but I do have some problems with this film that I'm going to get into. And please don't hate me for this, but it's Toy Story 3. Um, yeah, I'm going to say this off the bat. This is my least favourite Toy Story movie, to be honest. I do enjoy 4 a bit more. Um, but yeah, this this movie just it goes too far with the emotions for me. It, it really, really does. Um, but it's a great story. It That's what I like about it, is it's great to see these characters back again, and it's a great story of coming to that point with the age where you have to part ways with your toys from your childhood. That it really, really captures, but my word, does it push the emotions on it so, so, so much. And not just with that, just the other aspects as well, the stuff with the villain... And, you know, the incinerator scene, it's just too much. Oh, my word. It's just, it's overload. It's absolute overload of emotions, this movie. It just goes too far with it for me. Uh, I think Lotto is a fabulous villain. Um, great, great, great motivation there. And, and really, I love the way that, you know, when we first meet him, everything seems to be, you know, fantastic and and. and and really happy on the surface, but underneath something's bubbling. I remember watching this movie with my dad, and and the bit where they meet Lotto, and he like sort of shows them round, and that. And my dad just went, "There's something not right here. Something's going on." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much." He was just like, "Yeah, I don't don't trust this at all." Um, but yeah, it's it's another great animated movie. But like, don't get me wrong. I love it, but I I do think it just it just pushes that emotion too 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 far for me. Um, but yeah, it's it was a great trilogy, and I'm glad I'm sort of glad we got the fourth one as well, even though it just feels very contained. But yeah, love the Toy Story movies. So coming up at number six for me is Kick Ass. Uh, wow, this movie was just a breath of fresh air to the superhero genre for me. I just absolutely loved it. The cast in this was just absolutely, again, superb. Um, love Chloe Grace Moretz as um, Hit Girl and um, Nicolas Cage as Big Daddy. Just a really, really good father and daughter duo in this movie. And Kick-Ass himself, I just thought re it felt really, really realistic and really... Um, grounded in the first half and I just enjoyed the hell out of it um, it was just so 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 much fun um, I do think it is better than Super but yeah I yeah Kickass enjoyed the hell out of it shame the sequel wasn't as good uh, I don't mind the sequel but it just wasn't as good as the first for me but yeah the first Kickass absolute ton of fun really really enjoyed it so Coming up at number five for me is a movie starring and directed by Ben Affleck, and that is The Town. I absolutely loved this movie. This movie was in the same vein as Michael Mann's Heat. I just absolutely loved and adored this bank robbery movie. It was just so, so, so good. Who knew Ben Affleck had this absolute brilliant directorial talent that came out of nowhere? Movies like Gone Baby Gone, this, Argo, Live by Night wasn't as good, but those first those first couple of movies he did absolutely superb. Um, the one actor I want to get into about this movie though is the late great Pete Possefwaite. My God, he doesn't do much in this movie, but he is fucking terrifying. Like you just do not want to get on the wrong side of him. Just oh god, what a riveting performance! Just absolutely superb. I know this was this and Inception were like two of his last roles, but what an underrated actor, man! Just absolutely superb. It's from my neck of the woods too, but yeah, just really, really 
great performance by him. But yeah, Ben Affleck's directing in this movie as well. Just, oh my God, on point. Uh, just so good. Very much, I sort of keep Ben Affleck and John Krasinski in the same vein. They're just two sort of actors that I just thought were like, okay, yeah, they're, they're fine. But as a, as directors, my God, do they have some talent. Um, But yeah, just again, absolutely superb movie. Great action sequences in it too as well. Jeremy, Jeremy Renner in this as well is just off the hook. John Hamm as well as the, the sort of agent who's trying to stop them. Really, really good action movie. So, yeah, again, if you've not seen The Town, do yourself a favour, check it out. It's bloody superb. So, coming up at number four for me is the movie that won Best Actor and Best Picture from this year. Uh, and that was The King's Speech uh, by Tom Hooper with Colin Firth and Jeffrey Rush and Helen the Bottom Carter too. Again, a riveting story. I'm not a royalist in any way, shape or form or anything like that, but I do find stories like this quite fascinating um, about uh, Colin Firth, you know, who's, who's, um, his brother was king but had to abdicate because of his relationship with this married woman. So he then had to take on, um, be crowned king and take on the throne. But yeah, he's he's got this difficulty with this speech impediment, and Jeffrey Rush is like sort of this linguist teacher who tries to like sort of make him overcome that. And he's got this brilliant, brilliant technique that he uses, which I won't spoil. But it was just I thought it was really, really clever. Um, you know, and it again, it was just a it's a fantastic looking movie too. Um, it really, really is just. A, a fantastic story that was the main selling point to me and yeah if you're into your, like your dramas and your best picture winners and everything like that give the king's speech a go man i wasn't disappointed by it the performances in it really really are solid and really really make the movie so yeah just a, a fantastic fantastic film well worthy of the um the oscar in my opinion right so coming up at number three for me is Christopher Nolan's Inception. Um, this movie, is to me, it's just so confusing. I can't quite narrow down what this movie's about. But my word, is it technically brilliant. The cast, the direction, the way the movie looks, the effects. It's just a blast of a movie with some of the best, again, action sequences put to film. The movie just looks so good. Uh, I want to touch uh, a bit briefly as well on the actual presentation of this uh, Blu-ray with the set. It just looks so good. We've got the lenticular slip as well, which just looks absolutely brilliant. Um, there's a bit more to this Blu-ray as well that I um, got as well. It came in a really, really good present uh, presented set, which I'll just get into here. It comes in this um, this briefcase set as well which comes with a few special features. Really, really is good. Um, look at the back as well. So we sort of get the movie itself with the totem and the discs, and it just comes in this great, great steel case, um, reminiscent to what you get in the movie. Um, it's just a, a, a fantastic, fantastic presented film. And uh, one of Nolan's uh, best, in my opinion. It's just probably under... Uh, Dark Knight for me with this one, you know, sort of on level with Batman Begins. Um, but yeah, as I said, great, great, great cast to this as well. Um, just a, just a, an all round fabulous movie. But again, can be confusing, but it just looks it looks immaculate in my opinion. Absolutely great. So coming in at number two for me is a movie that didn't... I don't believe this got a th theatrical release. I think it was just straight to DVD. Um, it's an animated film, and it's Batman Under the Red Hood. My God, this movie was just absolutely riveting, and again, a fant fantastic story. It's about Batman sort of dealing with uh, the massive... Uh, Implications of the death of Jason Todd, who was pretty much the second Robin after Dick Grayson, and who was uh, killed by the Joker. And then this new hero arrives in town called the Red Hood, 
and it just was just so riveting and the dialogue in it was just absolutely amazing and um, the climax to this movie was just on point i was just hooked i couldn't take my eyes off the screen the characters in this as well like black mask birds of prey take note this is how you do that character um it was just absolutely terrifying a part of this movie but my god was it riveting and so well voiced acted as well oh just absolutely on point for me under the red hood um one of the uh, the animated movies from um dc that was just absolutely stellar in my opinion so 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 good just absolutely fell in love with that movie thought it was just so great so my number one pick for 2010 is probably a movie you probably might be a bit disappointed by um but for me i i just really really got into it i thought it was the great of um a great first half to a two-part set of movies that was coming out at the time and it's harry potter and the deathly hallows part one um now for me i'm someone who read the book before i saw the film and this film pretty much nailed what was going on in my mind when i was reading the book i think it's the best adaptation put to film from the harry potter series in my opinion the only thing wrong with it is it left a couple of things out but everything it got nailed and wanted to bring to life on the pages i think it did that exceptionally um it really really did paint the it really did capture the 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 pictures that my mind was creating when reading the book it just nailed it for me it's yeah i just absolutely loved the presentation of this it was a great great start as well for the way it was going it my favorite part of the movie which they really really nailed is the um tale of the three brothers my god the way they did that was just absolutely amazing it was like something from an animated tim burton film it just looks so 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 good um if you don't like harry potter and it's not your thing that's fair enough absolutely gonna gonna um completely understand and get that but for me this movie just oh god it was it was riveting it, it gets going as well everything is just off the bat and it just oh god it just starts with a bang and gets going yeah and um it leads it ends on a really really sad note and a great cliffhanger leading into part two as well so definitely Hallows part one absolutely loved it i love the dynamic between the characters in it the way the story's going this uncertainty this quest that they're on um very very much feel the presence of Voldemort and his followers in this movie too as well they're just really really gaining momentum and gaining power even though we don't really see them on screen that much you just really really feel it and yeah that's why it's my number one pick I just absolutely adore the two Deathly Hallows movies um two for me I'll get into that in the next video but yeah um part one just a really, really good first half to the final Harry Potter story. I massively, massively enjoyed it. So, yeah, those are my top 20 favourite films from the year 2010. Some absolute gems in here as well. I'm sure you'll agree if you've seen any of these. If you haven't seen them, I hope I've given you a sort of... Uh, a piqued your interest in wanting to check them out because I fully, fully recommend all 20 of these movies. They are so good and just yeah really really got me um hooked and absolutely buzzing for 2010 really really good solid year so yeah i'll just leave it there and say thanks very much for watching if you've enjoyed please think about hitting the subscribe button if you're new and you know leave a comment down below about your favorite films from 2010 and uh, if i've missed any off these aren't every this isn't a full definitive list of everything i've seen from 2010 there's a lot of movies i saw from that year which i just didn't feel needed to mention but yeah so as I said, stay safe and take care and thanks very much for watching again. I'll see you soon.